Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. I may sound a little different because I'm recovering from laryngitis. I wasn't able to record for four days, but that's cool because I have so many in the backlog. Um, But that's why I sound like I have a little vocal fry or something, despite not being a young person. Um, So anyway, today we're going to talk about why you should never lie about your, quote, body count, which is the number of people you've slept with. That's another young person term, I believe. Um, Or really anything else about your sexual history. Before we do that, I must tell you to subscribe. I have lots of cool stuff coming up in the works. I have all the old stuff. It's all pretty cool. You could join my Facebook group. Uh, You could follow me all over social media. I'm on TikTok if I didn't mention it. Of course, I've mentioned it. So follow me everywhere. YouTube for my cohort that doesn't do TikTok. I would not have done TikTok (laughs) if if my kids did not say I should do TikTok as I talked about one time. But anyway, so why should you never lie about your body count? Because now the only people who are going to lie about this are women Men lie too, but they lie that they've slept with less women sometimes because if you slept with like, you know, 50 women, then you think that your potential wife is going to think that you are a um, man whore. Um, But I think that's stupid too. I think there's nobody who should lie about the number of people that they've slept with. Why? Because you are the person who did that. You are that person. That is who you are. If you have some big secret to hide and somehow like you, you feel like you are going to lie about this and keep it hidden for the entirety of your marriage, how can you open up and be genuine and close to somebody that you have a big secret from? You shouldn't be lying about anything in your marriage. The one thing you're allowed to lie about is if your wife is like, hey, I went to like sculpting class and I made you this vase. Do you like it? You should be like, yes. Or if your husband is like, hey, I just, uh, you know, did some new thing at CrossFit. Isn't that great? And you don't give a shit. You should say yes. But these are not lies about core aspects of your personality. The only person who is not going to be with you upon knowing your body count is somebody, and it's mostly, as I was saying, women who think the man's going to think that they're a whore. Sometimes it's men who think the woman's going to think they're a whore. And sometimes it's men who actually inflate their body count because they think the woman's going to think they're a loser. There's all sorts of ways to be insecure about this topic. They are all equivalently ridiculous. If somebody does not want to be with you based upon how many genitals have come into contact with your genitals, get rid of them sooner than later. This is no body that you feel comfortable with um, on a re- like sharing your, your true self with. So it could be one of two things. Either you have massive insecurity issues about yourself and self-worth issues and you were trained to not trust people and so it's a you thing why you're not sharing it. Or you're actually with somebody who's proven themselves to be extremely judgmental and have extremely conservative values around sex that go in opposition to your lived experience of not having conservative values around sex. And either way, this is bad. In the first situation, you are letting your low self-esteem tell you that somebody isn't going to love you based on anything about you. You are totally lovable as a person no matter how much sex you've had. Let me tell you something. A lot of the men that I work with regret breaking up with their ex-girlfriends who had a higher body count because and, and settling down with wives or ex-wives who had barely any experience. They put them into two buckets. One was like having fun with my girlfriend who has like um, slept with a lot of guys, you know, whatever. But I'm not going to settle down with that kind of woman. These are more conservative men. I'm going to settle down with a woman who's just had sex with me or like with one other dude. Guess why? Guess 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 why your now wife or now ex-wife that didn't have a lot of sex, guess guess why she didn't? 
Oh my God, why? Could it be because she doesn't like sex? That's Occam's razor. If you're a rational person, you got to understand if a person really likes sex, they're going to want to have sex. This is something that women frequently don't understand. And I wrote about this um, in a post about a woman who was religious and she um, was a virgin, but she wanted to make sure that she wouldn't meet a man who valued sex. A Muslim woman, this is one of my blog posts, um, and she's, it's something like, I'm a 30-year-old virgin, something, if you want to Google it. But anyway, so I was saying to her that I work with many women who feel like they, are, they, they dated a whole bunch of jerks, and all these jerks, and you could say, why did they date all these jerks? Well, because they have low self-esteem. I've discussed this myriad times, and they're attracted to jerks because they grew up with a jerk, one of the parents. Anyway, you should know that by now if you've been following me. But the point is, you've been attracted to jerks, and all the jerks liked sex. So the mind likes to make sense of things. So the time that you meet a, quote, nice guy and he doesn't pursue you for sex, you say, man, this must be what nice guys are like. They don't push you for sex. So you, you so you make an artificial dichotomy between men who like sex and are nice, or sorry, and are jerks, or men who don't like sex and are nice. No, that is not real. So then a lot of women end up with these guys that actually have extremely low sex drives, and they just thought the guy was nice and wasn't pressuring them, but in reality, the guy wasn't initiating sexual contact because he didn't care. Because he didn't really want any sex. And he may not even know that. But he must just be, some of those guys with low sex drives in general are like, wow, most men are assholes and I'm really nice. Like they believe it too. But what they don't have is a high sex drive. So that's why they don't want to have sex. So then when women end up in those situations, they're like, oh my God, like I conflated being a nice guy with being like a low sex drive guy. That's what it really was, you know? So it happens to women too. But anyway, if you're a woman with a high, quote, body count, you could fall into two camps. Either you could be very sexually liberal, adventurous, a sensation seeker, and have had a lot of fun in your young years, particularly in cities, coastal cities. This is, this is what happens. This is your 20s, <laughs> you know, and sometimes some of your 30s. And you have a bunch of partners, and it's fun. And you like it. And you don't feel any low self-esteem because of it at all. In fact, it's like high self-esteem because you're getting a lot of fun experiences. Men call you. Like, it's not like, I mean, this is like a myth that like a man has sex with you and then he doesn't call you. When a man has sex with you, then he doesn't call you. He did not enjoy sex. This is not hard. If you had a date with a man that was primarily talking and you didn't want to go out with him again, you would not have liked the talking. Makes sense, you know? So, but for women and men who enjoy themselves in bed, usually the relationship continues. Either it could be a sexual relationship or it could turn into more, but it doesn't just trail off. It's not like you got guys out there that was like, man, that was the best sex of my life. I'm going to lose her number. <laughs> I mean, just, it doesn't make any sense. So people that spent their younger years enjoying a lot of sex, they have a high body count. That's what happens. You know, the numbers keep ticking up. And then you have a bunch of people. This is true that there are other women that have a lot of sex that they do regret having. And these people want to lie about their body count because they don't feel that it really reflects them because some of them sadly have a sexual trauma history. Now, when you have a sexual trauma history, you've been abused as a child sexually, it does put you on a path where you think that your whole self-worth is your body and sex. It's very a sad situation, right? And so as a young woman, you may have sex that you don't want to have because you have been trained that that's the way to keep a man's interest. Then when you meet the man that you really want to settle down with, you may want to hide this because you actually deeply are ashamed of it and you feel that it was not a good choice. In that situation, should you lie about your body count? No, 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 no. Don't do that. Why? Because if a man is going to be with you, a woman who has made mistakes, we've all made mistakes, right, about various things, you want a man who loves you. He loves you in it, including things that you regret, especially would feel tender to you about things that you regret. You don't want a man who judges you for mistakes you've made, if assuming that you can consider them mistakes. 
You want a loving person. Believe me, there's plenty of men out there that are going to have a lot of tenderness and empathy for a woman that was um, got on a wrong path. You don't have to have been sexually abused. You could just be somebody with very low self-esteem that learned that women's looks and bodies are what draws men. And so you got into relationship after relationship. You didn't enjoy it. You didn't enjoy the sex. But you just kept doing it until at some point you had some sort of um, breakthrough that you don't want to do it anymore. Share all of this with your partner. Your partner should know you. They should know you and who you are on a deep level. Okay? And and if you edit out parts of your history, then you will never know that somebody, you, you can never then be with somebody who loves you for all of you. And that's a transformational experience. When people finally have a partner that they could share everything with that that is who you should marry you should not marry somebody that you ever feel because of something in you or something in them that you have to hide things from if it's because of you then you ought to go into therapy and work on your own self-esteem so that you could talk about your history um as an objective narrative of something that happened you know versus something that you're deeply too ashamed to share you can't really be in an intimate relationship when you're hiding big secrets And if it's because the person is judgmental or overly conservative sexually, this is not going to work out long term. There's many women that have, um, you know, extensive sexual histories and they marry a man who um, does not. (laughs) And the reason he does not is is twofold. Usually it's because he couldn't get laid as much as he wanted. He was a late bloomer and he didn't have confidence. And or he is very sexually conservative and feels that people should only have a couple partners, if any, before marriage. In neither case does it usually work out that you're going to be compatible with this man, unless he is extremely liberal in his philosophies and very self-aware and open, recognizing that he was a late bloomer, wishes he could have had more sex. He didn't. You, an attractive woman, wanted to have sex and were able to. And now he's going to reap the benefits of that because guess what happens if you have a lot of sex, just like if you play a lot of ping pong, you get better. (laughs) You get better at the thing that you do a lot of. So it's interesting because as I've discussed over and over, sometimes men want this crazy myth. A woman who's great in bed that never had a partner before you. A woman who loves sex with a high sex drive that just happened to never enjoy sex or really have much of it before you. How does that make any sense? Right? That would be like if you wanted a woman who was really into fitness, but you specifically only went for women who had never worked out before you. How's it going to go? It doesn't make any sense, right? This is in this country, especially people have sex and this puritanical, the the whole worldview of sex is just, it's messed up. It's just in its own category and it's it nobody makes any sense when they talk about it you know this is why I have a lot of couples who were raised in more evangelical climates and they were raised that sex is bad then all of a sudden when they get together in marriage sex is supposed to be good how the woman has spent her whole life being trained that sex is bad and sex is sinful so how is she supposed to flip on a dime and become sexy and sexual as soon as she's married it just doesn't make any sense people are trained and ha- in a certain way and they think a certain way and that doesn't just go away because you want it to. So anyway, the, the other possibility is that, well, this is not a possibility, this happens. When women are in love in the honeymoon stage, they delude themselves. They think, yeah, I used to like to have sex with a lot of different guys, do a lot of different things. I used to be very adventurous, but now I've met Mr. Perfect, Mr. Wonderful here, and um, uh, my hormones are racing. They don't articulate this part I because um, they, they think it's real. Now, now I just want to have missionary sex for the rest of my life with one man possibly doggy style, (laughs) you know, and um, guess what? Guess what? If you were very adventurous and sensation seeking before, you are going to want an adventurous sex life. It doesn't have to be multiple partners. Many women are happy to settle down and be monogamous, particularly when there are is marriage and children, you know, in the mix. But they're going to be wanting to do crazier stuff than missionary sex for three minutes, you know, and stuff that they used to do with other people. And if they can't show any part of themselves that's super sexy or sensation seeking or adventurous because the guy's going to be like, where'd you get that from? I thought you only slept with one guy before me and you hated it. Well, that's a big part of yourself that you're cutting off. And if you think that this wouldn't happen, it happens because sexually conservative men 
they don't really like the idea that the woman is bringing up all these crazy things in bed. Somebody could tell if you've done stuff before. It's like my ping pong analogy. You could tell if your partner's played ping pong before, you know, and uh, you could tell if you're, uh, the woman that you're with really enjoys doing something or if she's good at it. This is why women who are trying to lie about their body count or men who are also trying to decrease their body count, frequently they're kind of trapped in a box in bed. They don't want to bring up like the full range of things that they would like to explore doing because they are lying, saying that they had less experience than they really had. So they don't want to kind of break character. They don't want to give the person any reason to question them or to doubt them. So they act more shy and reticent than they really are. And they do this during the honeymoon stage and it seems very romantic and sweet and demure and like now you're really being your true self. You know, the other part of you that really was, you know, adventurous was in the past. In the honeymoon stage, that seems good. Guess what happens after the honeymoon stage, after 1.5 to 3 years post-marriage? You start to want to do stuff again. You start to want to get tied up again or whatever your thing is. But you can't say it because you're scared that you're going to come off like you've done shit before or that you've thought about things in a different way or that you're just a more sexual person than you had ever let on when you were doing your persona with the best of intentions because you genuinely thought you were a whole new person now. Well, you're not a whole new person. <laughs> you know, nobody changes their entire personality uh, for somebody else. And there's still part of you that wants to do whatever you were doing with the other people in your life before, in that other stage. A very, very good example of this is in the show Sex Life on Netflix, which I've also written about in my blog. But um, sex slash life. So you could Google that and you should watch it, you know, because it's real interesting. And talk. It's this exact thing. A woman had a crazy wild sex life before, but uh, she never really let the man know about it. And then she starts to yearn to be that person again. She should never have lied. You know, she never should have lied. But she was in love. She thought she was a new person, new stage of her life. That was then. This is now, etc. All right. So I hope that you got something out of this. Never, ever, ever, ever lie about anything core to your being. Your number of sexual partners is core to your being. It describes who you are. It's what you were doing most Saturday nights in your 20s. <laughs> so, I mean, this person doesn't know that. What do they really know about your sexual history? And how could you build an intimate, deep connection based on lying? You're always going to have to pretend to be somebody else and you will never get the deep, authentic fulfillment of being with somebody who loves you for you, for who you really are. And the person is very much within their rights uh, to be very angry with you for having lied because you're, it's a lie after all, as you would be if they lied to you. So yeah, you get stuck in a hell of your own making and a trap where you can never say you know, what you actually lied about, even as you grow closer and more committed, you know, because you already lied about it. So don't lie in the first place. And if you, of course, happen to lie in the first place, and now you decide that you'd like to tell your partner more about who you really are, they may get mad. It doesn't mean it's a deal breaker, but I mean, they might really get mad. But if it's in the service of you saying, I really feel like you don't know me as a person. I made horrible mistake telling you that I had only slept with three people. I really slept with 30 people. And uh, let me tell you about it. I mean, they may be really mad. It may be a deal breaker. But if it isn't, I mean, people get over a lot of shit, including infidelity. This is not infidelity. It's a lie about the past. I mean, so it's kind of different. But, um, you know, there are relationships where people do share secrets that they had lied about and then they grow closer. Uh, you know, you probably talk to a therapist about how to do that, though, how to broach that type of thing, if that's something that you want to do, and why you're doing it. If you're doing it for a purely selfish reason, it's different than if you're doing it because you actually feel terribly guilty and you want to move forward and you feel that there are sex life problems and you want to work on them very openly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know what I mean? Versus like spitefully saying to somebody in an argument, yeah, well, I slept with 28 more dudes than you think I did. Like, you know, don't do that, obviously. That's insane. All right. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.